accept my uh, accept my greetings uh, from Islamabad. I would like to invite Ambassador Shahid Kamal for uh, opening remarks. Before before I would like to invite I would uh, I would introduce himself. Ambassador Shahid Kamal is a seasoned career diploma, diplomat uh, with 40 years of his diverse experience in uh, besides besides his career uh, diplomatic career. Uh, he is the founder of uh, Comset Center for Climate and Sustainability and uh, Center for Climate Research and Development Comset University is now born. I would like to invite Ambassador Shahid Kamal. Excellency, over to you. Excellency, please unmute. Yeah. Okay. Honorable guests, panelists, ladies and gentlemen, and dear friends, it is with great pleasure that I warmly welcome all those who are joining us today from across the world for the event this afternoon. And a very big thank you to all, your, all those who are participating in this webinar on feasibility or for study of provision of safe drinking water through water conservation. This webinar is co-hosted by the Comsat Center for Climate and Sustainability and the Center for Climate Research and Development at Comsat's University, Islamabad in Pakistan. I would also like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests this afternoon who have joined us for this webinar. I would like to start with extending a very warm welcome to the Secretary General of Developing Aid Organization for Economic Cooperation, His Excellency Ambassador Isiaka Abdul Qadir Imam. The, the Secretariat is based in Istanbul, Turkey. I'd like to convey our thanks to the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation for the financial support it has provided for the feasibility study um, for this project on water, on water conservation. I'm happy to inform Your Excellency that out of the eight member countries of the D8, the Comsat Center for Climate and Sustainability it has collaborative partners in all the D8 countries. We are glad to have had the opportunity to collaborate with D8 on the provision of Safe Water Project. And we look forward to strengthening our cooperation with the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation. I wish to convey our special thanks to Dr. Atau Rahman, Additional Secretary at the Ministry of Science and Technology, Government of Pakistan, for taking time out of his busy schedule to be with us this afternoon to make the opening remarks. I also want to take this opportunity to convey our thanks to the Ministry of Science and Technology for the support it is extending to our activities in Comsat, which we greatly appreciate. Also, a big thank you to Mr. Ahmed Kamal, Chairman, Federal Flood Commission, Ministry of Water Resources, Government of Pakistan for accepting our request to make the closing remarks. Mr. Ahmed Kamal's vast experience and ex expertise in matters relating to environment, water resource management, and disaster risk reduction has been beneficial for our work. Our thanks go out to all the partner institutions for their cooperation and valuable contributions in the preparation of the feasibility study. I would like to warmly welcome all the representatives who are participating today in this webinar from our partner institutions. And I'd like to begin with the Center of Excellence 
for Research and Applied Sciences and Climate Change and Sustainable Development at the National Research Council in Egypt. The Imo State University in Nigeria, Pakistan Council of Research in Water Resources, and the Capital Development Authority of Islamabad. The topic of safe drinking water requires immediate action because climate change, increasing water scarcity, population growth, demographic changes, and urbanization pose challenges for water supply systems everywhere. According to the UN, over 2 billion people live in water stressed countries, which are expected to experience further challenges in some regions as a result of climate change and population growth. To discuss this important subject, we have an excellent panel of experts who will share their outcomes and their findings in the study for providing safe drinking water through water conservation, as well as they will be in a position to share their perspectives on the challenges of larger challenges to how on sustainable water management. Our panelists are Dr. Tawkir Ahmad, Assistant Professor at the Center for Climate Research and Development, Comsats University, Islamabad. Professor Fajr Abdul Gawad, Deputy Director of the Center of Excellence for Research and Applied Sciences on Climate Change and Sustainable Development at the National Research Council of Egypt. Professor Kenneth Yongabi Anchan at the Imo State University in Nigeria. Dr. Naveed Iqbal, Director Hydrology at the Pakistan Council of Research and Water Resources. Ms. Saima Naz, GIS expert at the Center for Climate Research and Development, Comsats University, Islamabad. A very warm welcome to all the panelists. And we are really looking forward to uh, listening to your findings. And um, again, a, a very big thank you for, uh, for joining us today uh, for this webinar. Let me finally, wish you all an informative and interesting uh, session on a topic of growing importance. So once again, thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Excellency. Now, I would like to invite uh, Excellency Ambassador Isiaka Abdul Qadir. He is serving as Secretary General uh, DA Secretary. He, he joined as Secretary General since January 2022. And I would like to invite His Excellency Ambassador Isiaka Abdul Qadir. Please, Excellency, over to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Your Excellency Ambassador Shahid Kamal, founder of the Center for Climate Research and Development at Comsat University, Islamabad. Dr. Atahur Atai Rahman, Additional Secretary. Ministry of Science and Technology of the Government of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, heads of delegation from D8 member states, distinguished speakers and participants, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon from, uh, from uh, Istanbul. It's my pleasure to attend this important webinar organized by the Comsat University in Islamabad. At the outset, I wish to express my profound appreciation to the government of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan and the Center for Climate Research and Development at Comsat University in Islamabad for hosting this webinar to share the outcome of the ongoing feasibility study for the provision of safe drinking water through water conservation. Permit me to recognize the team of researchers and scientists who have contributed to the research work which will be presented at the webinar today. Noteworthy are contributions made by Dr. Takir Ahmed, Assistant Professor at Comsat University in Islamabad, and Professor Fagir Abdul Gawid, Deputy Director at the National Research Center in Egypt, as well as Professor Kenneth Yogabag Achang at Ebony State University in Nigeria, amongst others. Distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen, the D8 Project Support Fund, which has provided financial support 
for the feasibility study that will be examined today is one of the flagship initiatives of the D8 organization. The D8 Project Support Fund initiative was established by the leaders of D8 in 2017 to provide financial support to conduct feasibility and pre-feasibility studies for the implementation of projects that can bring benefits to the D8 member states in a fair and equitable manner. It is gratifying for us to note that the program is now on course and member states are increasingly showing more interest in this initiative. I wish to state that today's program is the first ever webinar to be organized by any D8 member states to share the outcome of the feasibility studies under the D8 Project Support Fund initiative. I therefore wish to commend the management of Comstart University for the decision to take for the decision taken to organize this webinar. We are how we are very very hopeful that the webinar will, will achieve its purpose of enabling participants to exchange views and experiences to address the key challenges and gaps related to water management. I wish to use this opportunity to call on other beneficiaries of the D8 Project Support Fund to organize similar programs to share the outcome of their feasibility studies with member countries. This will enable member states to exchange views and exchange experiences in research works. And most importantly, it will assist the Secretariat to improve on the implementation of the Project Support Fund initiative moving forward. Distinguished participants, the agenda for today's discussion is safe drinking water through water conservation. This is crucial and is in line with the priority programs of the D8 organization, which seeks to foster economic cooperation through sustainable development programs. It is for this reason that the D8 has decided to sponsor the feasibility studies, which is now being carried out by Comstart University. I am optimistic that the outcome of this study will bring immense benefit, not only to the people of Pakistan, but to the entire people of the D8 member countries with regard to the management of water resources. On this note, I look forward to continued collaboration with Comstart University and wish this meeting fruitful deliberation and resounding success. I thank you all. Thank you so much, Excellency. Now, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Ataur, Dr. Atauroman. He is serving as uh, additional secretary of Ministry of Science and Technology, Government, Government of Pakistan. Dr. Atarman, please, over to you. Thank you, Ambassador Shahid Kamal. Honorable Secretary General, D8 countries. Respected speakers organizers of this webinar, ladies and gentlemen. I extend a very good afternoon to you all. First of all, I extend my thanks for inviting me to this webinar. I'm not in a position to emphasize the importance of water conservation before this August forum of many experts of repute on the subject. However, on behalf of the Ministry of Science and Technology, I deem it incumbent upon me to highlight and stress the importance and urgency of water conservation in today's environment where this precious commodity is fast dwindling for a number of reasons. I once again congratulate the organizers for holding this webinar. And I look forward that all the stakeholders get benefited 
from this webinar and the subject study, which is the subject of discussion. Where thanks and appreciation are due to the organizers, partners, and sponsors of the study. At the same time, I must take this opportunity to say a few words. Again, as I mentioned earlier, to highlight the importance of the team. Water is getting limited and limited with every passing day. It's a resource that is not available out of bounds. And it is going to pose a huge challenge before many countries, in fact, more serious of grave severity to a number of countries around the globe. Water Council for Research on Water Resources, PCRWR in Pakistan, is doing a lot in this regard. Recently, uh, on the occasion of the celebration of Water Week in Islamabad, many of the achievements of the council as well as of the partner organizations were highlighted in detail. It was talked as to how the surface water should be recycled and how the rainwater needs to be harvested to contribute to efforts of conserving this precious commodity. As a first step, rather as a very small step, the council on its own office premises has made an effort to conserve the water rainwater or any quantity of water that falls on the surfaces of the office premises. And there are partnerships to the same effect with Capital Development Authority of Islamabad so that similar efforts are replicated and expanded elsewhere in Islamabad. But Ladies and gentlemen, these are very small steps of limited potential on the one hand, but limited quantum rather. But on the other hand, they have the potential of huge achievement in this crucial sector if replicated and highlighted appropriately not only in capital city like Islamabad, but elsewhere too. Not only in Pakistan, but elsewhere as well. Similarly, there have been efforts, successful efforts, to reduce the quantity of water required to grow, rather plant, the rice crop in Pakistan. Traditionally, this process is carried out where the entire field, where the rice crop is supposed to be grown. The entire land prepared for this purpose is flooded in water. And only then the plants are, the saplings are planted. Water Council, the, the Research Council for Water Resources under the auspices of the Ministry of Science and Technology has reached this achievement to do this task with limited quantity of water. 
this is a big stride needs to be projected needs to be popularized and implemented in fact it's a huge task in countries like ours to convince the farmers that equally good crop can be grown using far less quantity of water and hence conserving the precious and limited commodity that water is i look forward that the study that is under discussion today leads unfolding leads to unfolding such steps and devising ways and means strategies that will lead to conservation of water i am aware of the fact that the study has limitations as every study in fact has in terms of locality in terms of scope but at least some doable principles will be set forth to act upon which water conservation objectives like water conservation will be achieved successfully i would also emphasize here that such studies needs to be more and many not just in 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 one sphere of water conservation but so many as i mentioned earlier through domestic household and business places or workplaces environment conserving water in such places is one thing but conserving water in other areas as i mentioned those of managing crops and other agricultural activities similarly there are other sectors where huge amount of water is wasted for example car washing service areas and so many others so coming back to the point the subject study that is feasibility study of safe drinking water through water conservation will provide impetus to doing all these efforts successfully i will not go into details neither i am competent to to do so but as a citizen and on behalf of the ministry of science and technology first i will express my happiness that such efforts are on and second again on behalf of the ministry i assure unflinching support to such efforts not only to those that are currently going on but also those that are planned in future i once again thank the partners of this study that is the amo state university in nigeria national research center of egypt and the sponsors of the study that is the dhs secretariat and at the same time appreciate the efforts of the organizers the center for climate research and development from set university and the pcr uh, wr as well and look forward that similar efforts will continue in future as well i conclude again with the assurance of the full fledged support of the ministry of science and technology in all such efforts and endeavors in future thank you very much thank you so much dr adharma for your kind remarks now there is slight change in program uh, i would like to invite professor kanish jongar bhai 
He is regular professor at, at, from, in public health and infectious disease and phyto biotechnology with uh, over 150 scientific publications. I would like to invite Professor Yung away. Professor Yung away, over to you, please. I can wait. <laughs> Is uh, you know, is uh, a point state. Fantastic. 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 Isn't it two? Oh, emo. Yes. Uh, yeah. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Is is both emo state and yes, you are audible. Okay. Can, 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 okay. Audible. okay. Uh, this is good. Um, I I would like to first and foremost. Uh, stand on the existing uh, protocols um, and to respect all the dignitaries who have already uh, presented their uh, opening remarks. And I would like to say that this is a privilege for me uh, to be invited and to be present in this um, very honorable gathering uh, to share thoughts, um, you know, on this. Um, unfortunately, I would have wanted to follow the program entirely, but um, so many other conditions are actually uh, preventing it. So, um, you know, my fears was not to be able to uh, give my speech uh, for today. Um, before I continue, uh, I would like to uh, ask the host to allow me share my screen uh, so I can uh, take on this presentation. Uh, let me <clears throat> uh, share with my screen. Let me share. Let me allow you to share, share screen, please. Is it okay to share the screen now? I guess you are allowed. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I can't, let me see. Sorry, let me redo that. And I share. C can you see my screen? It, please let me know if you can yes. see. My yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so um, I, I would like to say it's been a privilege to collaborate with um, you know, the Center for Climate Change uh, University in uh, Islamabad, Pakistan. And it's been a very big privilege that we're able to share information across continents. And that is a wonderful opportunity uh, that we're able to uh, talk about water conservation uh, and share ideas within the two continents, Asia and Africa. And that has been wonderful. So um, we know uh, that 1.2 billion people uh, do not really have uh, clean water and have water. And, uh, you know, uh, emphasis uh, has been on treating this water, which is very expensive, looking at the technologies that are in place. And we also know that uh, close to 1.2 billion people, uh, mostly in the resource limited countries, uh, do not have sanitation. And sanitation, we know, is hinge on water. We cannot practice effective sanitation if water is not there. So water is a critical resource uh, for um, uh, sanitation and other sectors of the economy. And we all know that. But unfortunately, um, you know, as much as we do know that emphasis has been put on water treatment, but one sector which we realize that could actually be very beneficial if, is if we are able to cultivate uh, an attitude of conservation. And so we call this lecture uh, our experiences here, water conservation literacy. Literacy, water conservation literacy. Are people aware? How do we educate people to have that culture of water conservation? And obviously schools are the best because we want to make it generational over time. So I move to the next slide. And so that allows me to share the experiences in Nigeria. Uh, my next slide, uh, if you cannot see my slide, please just indicate. So that way I, I, I would be able to uh, know what to do. So of course, um, I'm going to be sharing lessons from Nigeria here. And now um, in Nigeria, uh, and of course in Africa, uh, people are not conscious of conservation. People are not conscious. People just use water. And they know that water is scarce, but when they are 
uh, around the tap point, they open the tap, they use it in washing. So, so much water is being used for flushing the toilet. So much water is being used for washing hands. So much water uh, is being used for washing cars. So much water is being used for uh, watering the gardens and all that. So, but how do we incorporate the culture of conservation in the DNA of people so that when you are about to use water, you know that, hey, you have to use just the required quantity of water to give you the benefit rather than excess use of water. It's a big, it's a big deal to change behavior. And that is what we have been trying to do. And that's why we had to focus on children. Of course, if you look at the slide in front of you, I hope you are seeing it. This is in, in Nigeria. And the other one there uh, where you see the children, uh, you know, in Cameroon. Now, people at the point of collection, there is water wastage at the point of collection. So we are trying to let the children, let the students, let the peoples in schools to know that don't waste water at the point of collection. Uh, the next slide, again, we also took time to educate the children um, in the schools. There are pilot schools where we have chosen, which is in Oweri, in, you know, in Southeast of Nigeria, that water is about 75% of the body. We can cope, we cannot cope without water, but we can cope a little bit with our food, but we cannot cope entirely without water. So we educate the children and the students on the importance of water in the body and the importance of water uh, conservation. Next slide here. Let me take a next slide. Now the next slide. So if you look at the picture there in front of you, if you look at the picture in front of you, you will see that um, there is a lot of water diseases. I mean, if you look at the blue points there, the blue points is showing countries that have a lot of water in terms of portable water, clean water. Now, if you look at Africa and you look at Middle East, they are looking gray. That means uh, they don't have good portable uh, water. So there is a problem. Now we catalog in Nigeria, how water excesses, how water excesses, wastage of water from saloons, barbing saloons, hairdressing saloons, they waste a lot of water. Uh, in the hospitals, they waste a lot of water. So if you see the amount of wastewater coming out from these uh, 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 different uh, uh, institutions, it's just mind boggling. And that's something we need to. So water conservation has to look into all the sectors. Although we're focusing on school, but we're also educating them because these children or these students from schools, when they get out there, they would also be working in these different institutions and they would have to have the attitude of conservation. So you can see there uh, how in, in Nigeria, water is a difficult resource. You cannot go and fetch this dirty water, manage to treat it, and then you waste it. So we show them all this. So you can see the pictures there. This is a scenario that we have. Look at this child on the picture on the left. So we also educate children like this in primary schools, how to collect this water without wasting it. And the water is dirty. Now that is that. Now we, we realize that treating water, and this is an observation that we also take note of, treating water in Nigeria is also very, very expensive. So that's the need for conservation. So we tell them treating water is expensive. That's why you are buying portable water at an expensive cost. So you need to conserve it at home. Now, water filters, the technology is very expensive in the country. The water filters, most of the households uh, you know, in Nigeria do not have a water filter. Most of the households don't have a water filter. So when you buy clean water, conserve it. Just make sure you use only what is required of you. But what we're also doing, because you cannot conserve dirty water. Some a child asked me, a student asked me, can you conserve dirty water? So what do we do about that? So that brings me to the next thing I want to talk about. Can we conserve dirty water? And a student asked me, what is water conservation as opposed to water preservation? Water conservation and water preservation. What is water preservation? So this topic, we realize that as much as we're trying to you know, educate the children, educate also the, uh, the schools, we need to avail them with skills on treating water, how to treat the water. Because you need, you cannot be conserving dirty water. And if, of course, if you want to conserve dirty water, you have to treat that water and make it portable, and then you can conserve it. So water preservation is making sure that the water that you have that is clean is not contaminated within the household. So we're treating those two topics uh, together. 
Now, so for that reason, we decided to start training them on how to treat water. So you have to treat the water, you have to conserve it because we realize that it's a holistic water conservation, it's a holistic concept. If you have only dirty water at home, how do you conserve it when you haven't treated it? But so we're not treating, helping them to treat the water using Moringa. So you can see Moringa there. So we brought this technology hand in hand to help them to treat a uh, uh, water. So this is the, the technology that we've actually uh, uh, sort of availed them uh, uh, on how uh, to treat water. And uh, if you look at here, that is that. So we now train them on building Moringa sun filter system at household. And then we put a tap, look at the tap here on the left, that tap enables them to just collect only the amount of water they will need. So it prevents wastage. That is on the point of collection, but this is treatment first. We treat the water. We have given them the technology for treating the water. We've given them local materials, Moringa sun filtration system, like what we have constructed here. They treat the water, but they conserve the water. They only use what they can use. And then they also preserve the water. What is preservation? That means when you have this tap point that you see on the left, you only collect what you need. Now, look at that water. That's the clean water. Look at the picture there. You see clean water treated using Moringa sun filter. That's what we have there. And uh, you can see uh, us here. We provide, we try to see how the schools can be provided with wells um, at the end of the day so they can preserve the wells by making sure the wells have a lead and then making sure that they're able to collect and without wastage, making sure that they're able to treat water using Moringa sun filter technology. And I think that's what Pakistan and most of the resource limited countries must be able to adopt this technology. It's cheap, less energy. You don't use energy because most of the treatment of water technology actually you know, encourages climate change, encourages global warming because there's a lot of energy that is being used. Moringa technology and sun filter does not use energy. So it's actually the most ecological in terms of you know, uh, mitigating climate change, mitigating global warming, and then also at the same, at the same time, uh, we're combining it with conservation skills. So that's clean water there, you have seen. And then we've been able to, uh, uh, we're working out a small booklet on water conservation tips for children in secondary schools, uh, you know, where they have to wash their hands at the point of collection to mitigate waste, uh, waste water, and then also uh, making sure uh, that they drink only the required amount of water that they need to drink uh, without uh, pouring out uh, any excesses, uh, you know, onto uh, the environment. So we're working at that and we're trying to make little uh, booklets, um, you know, and then doing a concept mapping where we have to, we have to come up with uh, some drama lessons, um, theater works uh, to be able to pass across the message. And we're also trying to translate these tips into the Nigerian local languages, which is Igbo, uh, Hausa, uh, as well as the Yoruba uh, languages, but also thinking of putting some of these tips in French. Uh, so I would like to end here, but in summary, uh, I would like to say that water conservation is a very critical issue, but while doing the water conservation, we need to also understand water preservation, and we also need to be concerned about the technology and how we are able to pass across this message to, uh, to the children in secondary schools. Uh, the work is ongoing, there are many challenges, uh, but hopefully uh, we want to see that uh, this works in Pakistan very well and of course works in Nigeria very well. And uh, it's a, a very good platform for knowledge exchange uh, and so on. I'd like to thank the organizers and thank everybody um, you know, for this. Uh, I really wish everyone the best. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Professor Yongabai. Now, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Tokiri Aman. Uh, he is, uh, by profession, he is in, an environmentalist, microbiologist, and water management expert. I would, I would like to invite Dr. Tukir Ahmed to come and uh, share his experiences. Dr. Tukir Ahmed, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Bismillah rahman rahim 
So for our project, feasibility study of provision of safe drinking water through water conservation. The journey we started in 2015 with the study on the vulnerability of Pakistan water sector to the impacts of climate change. So based on the recommendations of our first project at CCRD that was funded by the Italian embassy in collaboration, which we completed in collaboration with International Institute for Sustainable Development and local partner UNDP. So another project we started is yes. share the screen. So please share oh, the screen. Oh. Right. Next, please. So the this is this this is the first one first project which we completed in 2016 with the support of our international and local partners. The complete project report is available on the UNDP website. So based on the recommendation of this project, we took an initiative in 2018 on the another project. Next, please. On the smart water metering and pricing project, a step towards sustainable development. That's a one of the projects of Center for Climate Research and Development, founded at University of Islamabad, which we conducted in one of the sector, sector I8 of Islamabad, in collaboration with Swiss Development Cooperation, Pakistan Local Partners, Pakistan Council for Research in Water Resources, Government of Pakistan, and leading institute uh, in Switzerland, uh, ETS Zurich. So what we did, we imported the, the different water meters. Last one, last one. Last one. We imported and installed the different water meters in one of the sector, sector I8, covering both commercial and the domestic uh, water supply. So we tried to install the water meters at medium, small, large, medium, and small houses. So based on the data we, we gathered on daily basis, at the lower, lower side, you can see uh, the software through cloud data, we collect the water meter readings and then displayed on this software. So based on the water supply data, we installed two telemetries, one at the reception of Pakistan Council for Research in Water Resources and the other at the Center for Climate Research and Development. So we installed uh, different water meters and then we gathered the information on water supply, uh, local water supply. So uh, based on the recommendations, so we took the initiative, the first one, uh, uh, the, this one, the feasibility study of provision of safe drinking water. Next please. If we see the situation in Islamabad, we are uh, a water stress country. Water sources are depleting and even contaminating day by day. Slides are not moving. Slides are not moving. Sorry. Sorry. Slides are not moving. Okay. Okay. Let me. So. Let me. Let me. As we speak. Last one. Okay. As we share this go tell you what it Okay. 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 Please go back. Back, back, back. As a way, no, Yes, okay. 
So if we know, can you please uh, know, see that my, my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So if we see the water situation in Pakistan, we are facing the different issues, like we are already water stressed country, water sources are depleting and even becoming con contaminated day by day. What if we see the population size, population size is all, uh, is, all, is increasing day by day. If we see the situation in Islamabad, the average rate of increase in the, during the last two to three years is 2.9 to 3.1 percent. So accordingly, water demand is increasing. So as per the previous studies, they have reported that 7 to 11 percent of the water demand has been increased during the last two decades. So there is also a stress on the ground water resources. So day by day, water table is going down as people are fetching water from the groundwater sources. So uh, if there is a shortage of water supply, then they are relying on the groundwater. Next, please. Here you can see the water supply situation in Islamabad. If we see the water supply situation, they are already getting a shortage of water supply. Like uh, total water supply in Islamabad is 58 MGDs. That's a million gallons per day. So uh, th that's water is coming from the different uh, sources. Uh, that is one of the dams, that's the Simli Dam, that's uh, contributing about 40%. That's the 18 MDGs. Water, uh, groundwater is contributing about 27 million gallons per day. Then another dam, Harbour Dam, that is contributing 8 MG and from the different water wells, that's about 5 MD, MDGs. So according to the US standards, if we see the US standards, there are the 380 liters per capita water is required that, but in here in Pakistan, we are almost at 50%. So if we, if we see the relevance, the present study is the feasibility study with specific objectives for mega projects on provision of safe drinking water for 24 by seven in, in one of the sector of Islamabad as a role model. The sector is facing the challenges both, both in terms of quality and quantity. The completed project ind indicated that there's a no water shortage, but there's a need, there's a water burnness issues which need to be addressed. The, this project will serve as a benchmark for cities, not only in Pakistan, but also in the D8 member countries. As water scarcity and quality is, has been the most phenomenal problem among the D8 member countries. So the present study, which we uh, are uh, conducting here in Islamabad, feasibility study of provision of safe drinking water through water conservation, we started this study in July 2021 with the support of D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation. So the objectives of the study include to digitize the mapping of existing water supply distribution network of one of the sector of Islamabad by using GIS technology to study the feasibility and conduct cost benefit analysis for implementation of water metering and pricing and provision of safe drinking water as a role model in the study area. So the, the third objective to, to study the requirement and construction of water distribution system in order to supply treated water efficiently. Then the last but not the least that is the water uh, uh, awareness raising sessions among the community, including schools, mosques, and the community. And the same component has been delivered by the partner countries like in Egypt and Nigeria through, through our partners. So here you can see the, our different partners. D8 provided the uh, funding for this study. Egypt and the Nigerian partners, they are, uh, they are also working on the awareness raising ses sessions. So technical lead, and design and execution of the products has been conducted by the Center for Climate Research and Development, Kansas University, Islamabad. So our study area was uh, one of the sectors. If we see each residential sector is identified by a letter of alphabet and a number covering an area like I8, I8 is divided into uh, four subsectors like I8, one, two, three, and four respectively. So the total area, that's a two by two kilometer, so if we see the rainfall, the climatic pattern, pattern 
average rainfall is more than 1000 and humidity is approximately average humidity is 55%. Uh, so uh, first we, what we did, we did the mapping of the uh, sector. We collected the data through survey, digitized and prepared the maps. Then accordingly, we collected the coordinates from the different, different locations of the water resources like sumps. Sumps are the, the water uh, storage where they supply water to the different subsectors. Then there are different pockets. They control the different streets in each subsector. Then there are two wells which are supplying as a main source of underground water supply to the area. Then filtration plants, people are getting fresh water and clean water, contamination free water from these filtration plants. So we surveyed the different tube wells, uh, about 22 tube wells we surveyed, which are supplying water to, the, to this sector. And we collected the, the, the different information from the sums. So here I would like to invite my colleague, GIS expert, Ms. Saima Nas. So she will uh, explain about the digitization, about the GIS based mapping of the study area. Over to you, Saima. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Toki, for providing me the opportunity. Am I second? Yes. Uh, to share the first component of the project, uh, which is GIS mapping of sector I8. This sector of Islamabad is sharing its boundary with Rawal Pindi, which is a highly populated and urbanized city. I8 itself is a developed and populated sector with 900 acres of area. Now, over here, the sector is divided into four subsectors and markers. Why we did this? Just to make no, the previous one. Each subsector is shown with different color. Uh, and why we did this? Uh, just to make our uh, anal analysis and investigation more accurate, uh, more reliable, and easy. Uh, as very small area we have investigated one time. Next, please. Okay, uh, the next was digitization. In simple words, digitization is the process of converting geographic data into the vector data. Uh, and over here, advanced editing tools and techniques have been utilized to digitize the, each parcel of the sector. And you can see the uh, different parcels like schools, colleges, houses, streets, each and every information is plotted over here. And each parcel has been given the unique identity and information of each parcel has been also um, attached with the, uh, in the database with that parcel. So we can uh, get the information on just one click from the uh, uh, software or, and get the information of that particular parcel. After that, um, okay. So these two, first half of the slide is showing the location of sums. This is the geographic location of the sums uh, at the sector uh, I8 and the other half of the slide is showing the filtration location of the filtration plants. We have actually uh, mapped uh, this all water supply feature one by one to make it more clear. Next please. Next. Okay, uh, the first half of the slide is showing the location of pockets. There are 17 pockets uh, which are functional in sector uh, I8 and pockets are actually uh, controlled walls which are responsible to distribute water in each street. Like each pocket is responsible for each uh, street. So there are groups of uh, streets which, which are getting water from this um, pockets. And the other half, uh, please uh, back, go back, please. The other half is showing. Okay, the other half is showing the location of uh, tube wells. As uh, Dr. Tokir has mentioned, that uh, 22 um, tube wells are uh, currently functional in IU uh, sector, and some of them are in uh, HUD sector, but they are uh, supplying water to IU uh, sector, so that are also considered. Next phase. Okay, so um, this is the uh, this chart is actually showing the pockets 
and their respective streets. You can uh, see the pockets number uh, at one side and the street uh, which are getting water or, uh, being controlled uh, by these uh, pockets are uh, on the other side. And uh, all the subsectors are having four, four pockets, but I8 uh, four is having five pockets uh, and one pocket uh, of I8 four sector is responsible to distribute water in uh, Marcus. Uh, over here, uh, all water supply features are plotted uh, collecti collectively on one map just to check the uh, relation uh, and distribution patterns. Okay, so uh, here is the actually pipeline network of uh, the IU sector, and you can see uh, there are different uh, colors. Are uh, colors uh, pipeline lines are showing with different colors, and each color is actually indicating each pocket. And uh, like let's suppose the blue one is indicating blue pocket, and uh, the streets which are getting uh, the blue lines, you can see uh, uh, water from uh, the same pockets. And um, if we start from the beginning, let me show you. Uh, the first red line is a uh, pipeline around the sector, which has 10 uh, inches diameter. And the pink line uh, inside, uh, you can see inside the sector is showing um, pipeline around the subsector, which is of uh, six inches uh, diameter. And the blue, uh, light blue color is showing the uh, water distribution um, direction. Next, please. Okay, uh, according to the water uh, supply network, we have suggested uh, initially 16 water meters at the production and supply, main production and supply lines. Uh, so the water uh, recharge and discharge can be measured through this water meters. Uh, this is uh, okay. The next is water resistivity. Uh, the water resistivity of the sector is also uh, have been also checked uh, at 25 meters, uh, like 76 feet, you can say. And uh, it has been observed that uh, at the markers or in the central uh, center of the sector, there is very poor water uh, resistivity. Whereas uh, if you move from uh, center to the I84 sector, there is comparatively good water resistivity. Uh, this is all from my side. Thank you so much. Uh, and now I would like to uh, again call Dr. Tokir uh, for uh, to discuss the results. Thank you very much, Saima. So here, uh, along with the digitization and uh, GIS based mapping of the sector, we also performed our soil survey. So uh, what we did, we went uh, uh, throughout the survey, uh, through the sector. We visited each and every house. Uh, and we have almost covered a uh, uh, co complete sector. Uh, we have three covered three sub sectors at the moment. And uh, as you know, the study is in progress. So we will hopefully we will complete it within time. So what we did, we gathered the information here. You can see the different information of the question which we asked. Oh, uh, what type of water they are using for drinking purpose? What is their general use of water? Number of bowls overhead and underground tanks. Then. Uh, how, how many tankers they use uh, per month, what are their uh, water expenses uh, uh, bill, so how much amount they spend, so di different information we gathered from the uh, each and every house to, uh, to include in the mapping of the water supply. So here you can see the different questions we asked during the survey and then we gathered the information, I will explain it in, in the uh, Conclusion slide. So we also performed, prepared the different brushes for water conservation to cover the our four objectives. Uh, we prepared the brochures both in English and Urdu bilingual, so people they can easily read and understand, and then they can share the message for water conservation uh, to their contacts. So Accordingly, we visited the different schools and we organized the different events in the schools and the, uh, uh, in the community. Then we also organized the different stakeholders meetings to cover the uh, second and third objectives. So we had a meeting with the Chenga Pani program here I want to mention, uh, if you see on the left side, 
So on your left side, we have at a meeting with Chenna Bangalore, and they have implemented the conventional water metering and pricing at Union Council Three Barwal, at District Sargoda. So when we had a meeting with CDCRWR and the CDA, how to implement and to work out the locations of the water meters where we need to install water meters and to uh, su supply uh, water 24 by 7 without any interruption in the sector. So here you can see in this video, you can see some more glimpses of the event which we uh, organized during the uh, short period of six months. Uh, this is Ahmad Kamal. Let me tell you that uh, uh, I am not getting anything on my screen. Uh, the presentation is held up and there is no voice. Thank you. No voice. Pass on the next bit, next bit, the next slide. Bit.
Next. So next slide, please. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry if there was some technical issue with the uh, video which we prepared. We just uh, to highlight the different uh, events. Pakistan, Pakistan Water Week. During Pakistan Water Week, we uh, organize the poster and debate competitions with the support of Pakistan Council for Research in Water Resources and other uh, other stakeholders. So we not only uh, organize the different events under this project but regarding water conservation, we involved and engage the students uh, of different schools. So we also perform the water quality analysis of the uh, key locations of Islamabad. So it was surprising to see here the water quality results, even filtration plant, one of the filtration plant uh, water supplying to the end users that was found contaminated. So that was alarming uh, for us and also for the authorities. So if we see uh, here the conclusions, more than 50% which we, the data which we collected, more than 50% people using water water for drinking purpose. And more than 80% people use CDS supply for their general water usage. So that's a surprising thing. People, they don't uh, trust on the water supply by, by the capital development authority. Similarly, more than 80% have sufficient water for their use and showed willingness, more than 70% showed willingness for water metering and pricing as they are already paying more money for the uh, uh, for getting water from that uh, for their usage and also on the bottled water so water utility bills are charged on the basis of the covered area rather than their actual use so prices they can be adjusted on after installation of the smart water meters so there's a need to build confidence of the end users by the water supplying authority so uh, Existing drinking water sources and private services through water tankers are less economical to the general public. Government may prioritize the process of installation of uh, different water meters in the residential and com commercial uh, sector. So that can be more economic in terms of cost, labor, and time than the conventional water meters. So work is in progress. And uh, uh, we will share the further plans and outcomes during the uh, uh, in the final report of this study. At the end, I would like to acknowledge the support received from the D8 Organization for Economic Cooperation for providing funding for this study, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and Ministry of Science and Technology for their support. And I would like to thank Ambassador Shahid Kamal sir for their continuous support in all the projects, international projects conducted, which we conducted at Center for Climate Research and Development. We are also thankful to the Capital Development Authority, Pakistan Council for Research and Water Resources for their support, general public for providing data, and my team at CCRD for conducting this study. I thank you all for your time. Thank you very much. Over to you, Saif. Thank you. That's a screen for them. Uh, thank you, Dr. Tokil. Uh, and uh, my apologies for some uh, few technical uh, mistakes because uh, connectivity and uh, there will be some problems every time and uh, I apologize. And now I would like to invite uh, Professor Dr. Fajr al Gawad. Uh, she's director in NS National Research Center. I would like to invite Dr. Fajr Abdul Gawad. Dr. Fajr. Good morning. Thank you. Over to you. Fine. Sorry. Good afternoon. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, doctor. 
Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Fagra Abdelgawad, the Deputy Director of uh, Center of Excellence uh, for Research and Applied Studies on Climate Change and Sustainable Development uh, at the National Research Center uh, of Egypt. Um, in this presentation, I will tell you about uh, all our risk activities uh, uh, we conducted as well as the undergoing uh, studies taking place in terms of water conservation. Um, sustainable development goal number six uh, is to ensure the availability of water and sanitation to everyone uh, with the correct uh, production and ensured sustainability. The awareness activities perform at target uh, point 6A and 6B. Uh, 6A, um, uh, expanding international cooperation and capacity building uh, in developing countries in water-related activities and program. Uh, uh, and uh, point 6B, uh, supporting uh, and strengthening the participation of the local uh, communities uh, in improving water and sanitation management. Uh, so, chance of water in Egypt. Egypt is currently undergoing uh, a water scarcity crisis right uh, in the middle of an increasing consumption rate, uh, keeping in mind that 79% uh, of Egypt's water resources uh, come imported from outside its borders. Um, as a result, in Egypt 2050 strategy, there are four pillars made about uh, combating uh, this water challenge. Uh, which are to improve the water quality, developing water resources, uh, rationalizing uh, consumption and creating a good uh, environment depending on public awareness and stakeholders engagement. Uh, uh, these are the four pillars in Egypt uh, 2050 strategy in more details. Uh, pillar one targets to water and its treatment. A pillar uh, two targets uh, the efficiency of water consumption and improving water consumption and management, as well as improving farm technology. A pillar three targets uh, desalination of water using either plants uh, or technologies. And finally, pillar four, uh, which uh, targets capacity building and awareness campaigns and the involvement of media. This is Bahr al-Bakr wastewater treatment. An example in 2021, Egypt is uh, inaugurated Bahr al-Bakr wastewater treatment plant, which is one of the largest plant in the world. The daily capacity is estimated to be 5.6 million cubic meters. The plant operated within Bahr al-Bakr's drain wastewater. Uh, the produced water will irrigate amount of uh, 400,000 feet in Sinai. Uh, and uh, this is another project, Integrated Fish Farm. Uh, this project aims to utilize the limited water resources through treating the underground water using a combined uh, integrated system of hydrate filling pooling, uh, HFC, yeah. followed by a um, series of sand filters with nano porous uh, materials for partial desalination and water purification. Uh, the produced water was uh, used for fish farming, uh, hydroponic and service agriculture, as well as um, the prime or rigid water from the desalination system was used for irrigation, some fodder uh, such as uh, sariconia uh, that can uh, afford the high salinity water. Uh, this contributed to the um, dietary needs of uh, remote areas, uh, households, as well as generated additional employment opportunities and revenues. And currently there is a green building being constructed at the National Research Center of Egypt. This building is to be a prototype for the future of all green research building in the area. It's to be a net zero building as it will run completely on sustainable solar powered energy as well as being able to reduce water consumption. Uh, two routes will be pursued to reduce uh, the water consumption. Uh, the first one, reducing the fresh water consumption uh, and uh, number two, cycling of the waste water uh, generated from the building. Uh, the consumption uh, of fresh water uh, in the building can be reduced by using IR sensors in the in toilets. 
uh, IR sensors will um, will be con, uh, connected to water taps to stop water supply when uh, it's not used. Uh, this is expected to reduce uh, the consumption of fresh water. Uh, toilet flushing is uh, consuming high quantity of water, so replacing uh, it with treated water instead of using fresh water uh, will conserve fresh water usage. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the wastewater generated from the building will be separated uh, into the two uh, main categories. Um, domestic wastewater from pilot and chemical wastewater from laboratories. This separating is very important to reduce the cost of uh, the recycling of this uh, wastewater, uh, since domestic wastewater can be easily treated. Um, hereafter, a summary of the suggested methods for the treatment for, uh, of each uh, type. Uh, and uh, pre uh, prepaid water meter. In addition to wastewater treatment, it has implemented several measures to enhance water conservation. Uh, this includes the introduction of uh, prepaid water meter alongside um, increasing the drinking, the drinking water tariffs. Uh, this will result in more reasonable patterns of uh, consumption, which will lead to an increase in the efficiency of use of water. Uh, from my home, <laughs> uh, public awareness campaigns in according to uh, pillar four for the water strategy and the project with Dr. Tukir, we conducted several awareness uh, campaigns uh, uh, where we designed these uh, leaflets, both in Arabic and English, which were handed out to students in uh, various universities and schools, uh, telling them about uh, water conservation and how altering our everyday activities can uh, contribute uh, greatly to conserving water. Uh, this included activities such uh, as uh, recycling water, fixing uh, faulty pipelines, reducing uh, excessive water usage. And um, we also uh, held uh, awareness activities in universities and schools uh, throughout Egypt to teach students about uh, usage and conservation, uh, as well as have, uh, having interactive uh, QR scannable codes uh, for them to access the um, leaflet on the previous uh, slides and more resources for those interested in learning about conserving uh, waters. Uh, and we also held a training session at the National Research Center on water conservation and introducing climate change to students uh, of different universities and research centers um, and teaching uh, staff from all around Egypt. This was aimed to those interested in working on water conservation and being involved in research related to the field. Thank you so much, and thank you all for all organizer and uh, special thanks for and uh, all everyone and special thanks for the uh, ambassador Shahid and uh, Professor uh, uh, Takir uh, for uh, invitation and this opportunities uh, to work with us. Uh, I hope uh, uh, continuous work in the future. And thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the, for inviting us. Uh, now we would request Mr. Naveed Iqbal, the Director of Water Management Parks and Council for Dr. Naveed. Dr. Naveed Iqbal, Director of Water Management Parks and Council of Research and Water Resources, PCRWR Government of Pakistan. For his talk, please. Dr. Naveed Iqbal, please. Uh, thank you, Ji. Uh, uh, can you see my slide? Yes, it is, uh, it is visible. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, thank the Comsat Secretariat for providing this opportunity to interact with the uh, regional uh, researchers and the network of the uh, member countries. So uh, my presentation is uh, focused on the water management practices um, um, in Islamabad. Uh, so I will briefly highlight the uh, work um, that is uh, being implemented uh, by my organization, PCRWR. So a little bit introduction about my organization. Uh, so uh, my organization uh, is
We cannot hear him. As Pakistan Council of Research in Water Resources oh, sorry, you are not audible. and uh, our uh, development organization and uh... Dr. Naveen Iqbal, you were not audible. Can you hear me, Dr. Naveen? <laughs> Hello. Yes, you are now. Now you are audible. Go ahead, please. Okay. 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 So, a um, uh, little bit introduction about my organization. So, it's a Pakistan Council of Research in Water Resources. We work under uh, Federal Ministry of Science and Technology, and uh, our mandate is to conduct, coordinate, organize, and promote research on all aspects of water resources. Uh, so, um, uh, my today's presentation is focused on some of the activities uh, be being implemented in Islamabad regarding the water source management. Um, uh, as uh, already briefed by the earlier speakers that uh, uh, due to overall prevailing water scarcity, Pakistan is also um, uh, 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 listed in the countries where the uh, per capita water avail availability is less than 1000 cubic meter. So uh, this is very, um, a very critical situation. Uh, basically, the population is going on, uh, is going uh, increasing, uh, whereas we have a static uh, water resources. Uh, um, uh, uh, after a very long time, now the uh, sitting government has uh, uh, plan to enhance the existing uh, storage availability, surface water storage availability, and uh, we are hoping that in a near future, um, uh, this gap uh, uh, may be a, a, a little bit decreased be between demand and supply. Uh, so due to um, um, climate change implica implications, due to erratic rainfall, due to less water availability at a critical time, uh, there is a more dependence and resilience uh, on groundwater resources. Um, uh, groundwater, uh, um, uh, currently, the groundwater is uh, contributing about 60% uh, 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 to meet overall uh, um, uh, uh, and more than 90% industrial requirement is uh, being met through um, uh, groundwater resources. Um, uh, whereas almost 100% um, uh, surf, uh, hundred percent uh, drinking water requirements are being met uh, by the groundwater uh, resource. Um, uh, in very few cities like uh, Islamabad, uh, there is a surface water available, um, uh, which is being uh, the partial supply is being managed uh, through the surface water to uh, meet the drinking water supplies. Whereas uh, in other uh, cities, uh, almost hundred percent groundwater is being exploited. Uh, is used to meet the drinking water supply. So uh, due to the heavy reliance on uh, groundwater uh, resource, uh, there are uh, uh, certainly there are some issues which are uh, um, uh, arising and uh, uh, they are uh, uh, becoming more challenging in uh, day by day. The one of them is the uh, dec uh, declining of water tables and in some parts of the country, there is our groundwater depletion and, uh, and um, uh, as well as groundwater mining is also taking place. Um, uh, the uh, groundwater, the example of the groundwater mining, uh, typical example is Quetta Valley in Balochistan province, where the water groundwater depletion is basically uh, more than five meter per year. And the water table has gone up to the um, and and the uh, uh, groundwater pumping uh, is uh, uh, basically taking place at the depth more than 1000 uh, 1, feet so that is a very critical situation um, uh, if we look uh, our urban uh, areas the uh, all almost all the uh, metropolitan cities uh, the uh, gap between demand and supply is increasing day by day due to which there is a more pressure on groundwater resources and the management of groundwater is really very uh, challenging. 
so um, uh, particularly discussing the case of uh, islamabad uh, the capital of pakistan uh, the population is around 2.6 million and uh, uh, as i um, uh, told that um, the partial supply is managed through surface water system and the uh, um, ground water is also uh, um, uh, being ex used for uh, uh, meeting the uh, deficit uh, there are about 192 wells installed by the Capital Development Authority CDA um, uh, to manage some of the um, uh, sectors like I-8, I-9, I-10, uh, which wholly solely depend on groundwater system, whereas the rest of the uh, sectors, uh, um, uh, uh, they, they have the surface water supply available. Uh, but the demand, uh, the gap between, between demand and supply is increasing and uh, Currently, there is a shortage of 183 million uh, gallon per day, uh, and the as the supply is only 63 million gallon per day. Uh, this supply, uh, this is uh, this supply is actually um, 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 uh, increase. Demand is uh, actually uh, there is a more demand in the uh, summer season, and uh, uh, of course, in the uh, rest of the months, there is a, a less uh, uh, demand. So uh, the more critical period is the summer period where the lot of water requirement uh, emerges and uh, the gap is in, uh, increasing. So uh, due to this uh, uh, reliance on groundwater and uh, due to the in, um, uh, gap between large gap between demand and supply, uh, the water uh, table is actually uh, declining. Uh, on uh, this is an example of a, uh, data uh, uh, of one piezometer that is actually installed in G10 sector, and uh, uh, you can clearly see that uh, within a, a period of uh, only uh, three years from uh, 15, 2015 to 2017, uh, there is a, uh, a depletion of about uh, uh, three meter in water table. This is a single piezometer example, but if we look at holistically covering the whole Islamabad sectoral area, the overall uh, groundwater depletion is about one meter per year. Um, uh, but in uh, uh, the neighboring city, which is at the downstream Rawalpindi, there is a much more depletion rate and the depletion rate uh, actually varies uh, from uh, one to two meter per year. Um, uh, similarly, um, um, in Rawalpindi, uh, as I told that the there is a more depletion and uh, uh, due to uh, uh, a more population living there, the population is about 2.9 million. Uh, so there is a more uh, pumping requirement and as a result of pumping requirement, there is a more drawdown. Um, um, uh, besides this uh, groundwater depletion challenge, the, the groundwater quality is also another challenge. Um, um, uh, we have actually collected the uh, samples throughout Islamabad and Rawalpindi and almost cover all the metropolitan uh, cities of uh, Pakistan and uh, this is the temporal uh, variation in the uh, water uh, quality, uh, drinking water quality, um, uh, um, uh, which, which is basically analyzed at our lab by collecting the samples from the uh, households, uh, from the end users. Uh, what type of quality is being provided to the end user, the communities. Uh, so uh, there is a, a little bit uh, decrease uh, in, uh, th there is a little bit, uh, there is an increase in um, the provision of safe water uh, supply, but still there is a, a, a gap for further improvement. Uh, uh, this increase uh, in uh, the provision of safe water quality is basically, um, uh, uh, the credit goes to the government, the different initiatives, um, and as well as the awareness uh, generated uh, uh, by the different uh, uh, government departments, uh, such as PCRWR, the academia, such as uh, comsets and other universities, as well as the, um, the public and the um, uh, NGOs and the um, uh, other stakeholders. So over the period, uh, uh, the provision of safe water quality has increased, but still um, there is a lot more gap which need to be uh, filled out uh, uh, by providing the safe drinking water. So one of the uh, 
factor that is actually uh, impacting this uh, uh, provision of safe drinking water is related to the um, um, uh, untreated waste water. Uh, so um, in Islamabad, there is a one centralized system um, installed at I-9 sector where the whole um, uh, waste water, um, uh, which is generated throughout the city is basically uh, collected um, at a central point and then it is uh, treated. But the issue is this, that uh, due to this uh, 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 central approach, um, uh, there is a huge r and cost and uh, um, uh, it is not easy to uh, make it operational and on sustainable basis. Uh, uh, resultantly, uh, the, uh, the treatment plant is not actually operational um, uh, and uh, it is a very, uh, treating a very little amount of weight wa wastewater uh, generated, um, like uh, 20 to 30% of the total. So um, this is a very critical situation that the wastewater which is uh, generated um, um, that should be recycled to use for the multiple uses is actually not happening on ground and it is uh, rather contain contaminating our uh, water supply sources. Um, uh, the uh, uh, the, um, the tubers uh, uh, are also installed at the bank of the uh, nalas and streams which carry the, this uh, wastewater and uh, those those are actually uh, pumping the contamin uh, contaminated water. The major contamination is basically microbiological that is actually related to the uh, unhygienic conditions and directly corresponds with this uh, wastewater. There are about 32 nalas and streams in Islamabad and we uh, um, PCRWR has actually uh, started a study of uh, um, uh, um, uh, analyzing the wastewater, how much it is generated. Uh, being generated currently and uh, what is the uh, contamination level and uh, all the uh, uh, physiochemical parameters. Uh, on one side, there is a more pressure, the pressure on groundwater is increasing, the gap between demand and supply is increasing, the resources are being polluted. And on the other side, there is a flooding life situation. Uh, in Islamabad, um, uh, the, the rainfall, the annual average rainfall is uh, uh, about uh, 1300 uh, millimeter per year. Um, uh, and uh, uh, due to the urbanization, due to the uh, pavement, uh, the runoff is actually increasing over time, but the recharge is being restricted due to this in, uh, urbanization and infrastructural um, 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 uh, intervention. Uh, so resultantly, what is happening, uh, we have witnessed um, a, 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 a very um, um, a big uh, flooding event in sector E11 last year uh, in July. And um, at the, uh, during this flooding event, uh, we actually wait not only waste the precious sweet rainwater, but also it causes damages. Um, uh, on downstream area. So this is a very critical situation that we have a sufficient um, uh, quantum of uh, rainwater potential available, but we are actually not harvesting this uh, potential properly to recharge groundwater. Um, but uh, if, if we look uh, globally, uh, many countries has uh, taken initiatives to uh, work on um, managed aquifer recharge initiatives to recharge the groundwater aquifers through different techniques and uh, in, 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 in this uh, initiative, uh, um, India is taking lead where they are recharging about 31% of their abstracted groundwater uh, on annual scale. Whereas uh, USA is the second uh, top most country uh, where the Germany is the third uh, country with 9% um, uh, recharging their aquifers through different recharging techniques. Um, uh, the, this type of managed aquifer recharge is really uh, helpful because it not only um, uh, replenishes the um, uh, uh, groundwater aquifer to sustain the water levels and uh, to mitigate and to uh, counter the depletion challenges, but it also ensures the uh, reliability of the drinking water supply. Uh, moreover, it also helps to uh, reduce flood uh, risks and acts as the groundwater recharge is actually, and the groundwater aquifer actually acts as a buffer against uh, droughts. Um, and um, uh, uh, recharge 
uh, if we have a sufficient recharge in our aquifer, it actually facilitates to um, uh, sustain um, um, flow uh, in our streams and rivers because, because uh, it actually uh, helps to um, 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 uh, keep uh, flowing our rivers and uh, um, um, uh, streams. Uh, if there is a, a, a sufficient uh, recharge in the uh, groundwater system. But if the groundwater uh, uh, aquifers are depleted, uh, they rather uh, take a recharge through streams and rivers. So um, uh, similarly, if the, there is a sufficient recharge in the groundwater system, it actually uh, helps to mitigate the land subsidence issue, uh, land subsidence issues. Uh, issue when there is a groundwater mining the water tables are depleting then the land also subsidize and it is a very i mean big challenge uh, with some of the countries in uh, globally they are actually facing where there is a high, there are high rates of groundwater depletion um, uh, similarly it also um, uh, provides protection against uh, seawater intrusion uh, to maintain the interface between fresh and uh, saline groundwater, um, uh, as well as uh, groundwater recharge helps to improve the groundwater quality. Uh, it also, um, uh, through groundwater recharge, we can conserve uh, the rainwater potential, which otherwise is wasted or um, evaporated uh, in, into the environment. And this groundwater recharge is actually um, um, provide us uh, uh, adoption, good adoption against the climate implications. Uh, so having all these benefits, um, uh, the groundwater recharge or the managed aquifer recharge, uh, in other words, is called uh, water banking. So this is our water bank. The groundwater aquifer is our water bank. If we are going to recharge it, we are having a, a, and maintaining a good um, a balance, groundwater balance in our aquifer, then we are safe. And we, we, we are uh, doing a sustainable approach. If we are not uh, uh, balancing uh, our abstraction, then we are in a critical situation and uh, it will basically affect uh, the uh, provision of water supply for our future generation. So uh, managed aquifer recharge or MAR is basically a water banking. Um, so we need to um, um, uh, maintain a good balance in our uh, account. There are uh, two major categories of managed aquifer recharge. One is called the uh, surface infiltration. There are number of techniques which are used such like uh, uh, pounding, uh, uh, spread, uh, um, uh, creating artificial streams and ponds, um, uh, uh, doing some water management, uh, watershed management practices in the upper catchment uh, and uh, diverting water to naturally infiltrating river channels. Uh, and the second category is basically deals with the artificial groundwater recharge, which is called deep injection. So uh, it depends, the, um, uh, for, uh, it varies from place to place and it depends upon the characteristics of that particular place where we want to have a managed aquifer recharge interventions that which type of uh, technique is more suitable um, uh, to conserve water and recharge groundwater. Uh, um, this is uh, some of the examples that can be implemented at a local scale um, uh, where the rooftop rainwater harvesting is very efficient uh, technique and uh, through um, uh, this fresh water available in the form of rainwater it can be uh, harvested and uh, can be directly utilized for uh, irrigation as well as uh, after some treatment can be uh, utilized for drinking as well. Um, uh, PCRWR has actually piloted uh, some of the um, physical models to demonstrate uh, to the community and other stakeholders that these are the viable techniques and models exist which can be upscaled um, uh, at a much bigger scale to have a, a real impact uh, uh, to mitigate the uh, groundwater depletion issue. Uh, similarly, uh, so uh, what is the overall, I mean, um, uh, strategy or the action required uh, to, uh, to have a sustainable water resource management? For this perspective, there are three main points. The first point is that we have to actually increase our resource base. Um, uh, we have to focus 
um, efforts on rainwater harvesting uh, by uh, um, uh, developing small, medium, uh, and big dams, ponds, micro catchments, um, as well as artificial groundwater recharge to enhance the groundwater, uh, the resource base, the surface water, and the groundwater uh, resources. The second uh, uh, most uh, the second most important is the um, manage the available water resources. So there is a more conservation perspective. There is a more uh, recycling perspective. Um, uh, there is a more uh, um, uh, um, um, regulatory framework and governance perspective is required uh, to do, deal with uh, uh, the existing water demand. How we can effectively manage our water demand uh, if we uh, conserve water, if we save water, if we adopt the water conservation techniques for uh, drinking water, for uh, irrigation water, for industrial water. So we are basically decreasing the existing load on our uh, water system. Um, uh, similarly, if we, we go for appropriate water pricing and tariffing, that will also add advantage and will help us to uh, rationalize our water requirements. The third important is uh, to educate the people, to run the awareness campaigns, to educate the masses um, uh, that water conservation is uh, important. We should not uh, take water for granted. It is a common commodity. We need to uh, care about it. We need to uh, value it each and every drop of water. Um, it is uh, truly said that the uh, man who is sitting at the bank of the river uh, uh, don't know the exact value of the water, but the man who is sitting in the desert um, he or she can have the true value of the water. So we need to well give the value to the water, every, each and every drop of the water, uh, because it is a, not an unlimited resource. This is a limited resource, and we need to change our behaviors. We need to change our mindset while dealing with water, while using with water. So these three points are very important. So uh, uh, last year, uh, keeping in view all this uh, uh, prevailing challenges and uh, um, 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 the issues, uh, PCRWR has uh, um, assigned an MOU with the Capital Development Authority and the Federal Government Employees Housing Authority um, uh, to manage the um, existing water challenges in Islamabad. Um, especially uh, the focus was given on the uh, um, five uh, most important uh, 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 initiatives which have been covered under this MOU, uh, under the Ministry of uh, uh, Chairmanship and uh, Leadership of Ministry of Science and Technology. And um, uh, our uh, sitting minister, uh, Shibli Frasa, was very kind enough to um, have a full patronage of all these initiatives and uh, for um, uh, providing motivation and uh, consistent uh, leadership and guidance uh, for the uh, proper implementation. So under this uh, MOU, uh, there are the five uh, components. One first one is the uh, complete and comprehensive assessment of available surface and groundwater resources. We are actually implementing um, uh, different uh, geophysical techniques, different uh, um, uh, in situ measurements are being uh, conducted in the field um, and um, isotopic applications and uh, uh, all those uh, integrated methodology has been uh, adopted to, uh, uh, to analyze and assess uh, the available resource in a very comprehensive way. The second uh, uh, initiative is the rainwater harvesting for groundwater recharge. Under this project, uh, uh, CDA is implementing, um, uh, implement, uh, is uh, de uh, developing about 100 uh, recharging sites where PCRWR is providing technical assistance. And um, the third one is to manage water supply in uh, sector I-10 through piloting water metering public awareness. Uh, so uh, we have taken one sector as an example and uh, uh, under this uh, uh, initiative, uh, CDA, PCRWR, International Islamic University and Comsat, we are working together and uh, we are working on both uh, side of the uh, issue. Uh, we are also uh, trying to manage the demand and we also trying to improve our existing supply. Uh, 
as a supply in terms of quantity and in terms of quality as well. Uh, so we are basically uh, installing uh, with the um, collaboration of International Islamic University and uh, Comsat University. Uh, we are first meeting our um, um, our main resource base in sector I8, I9, I10. Uh, there are about 20 uh, T wells uh, uh, installed in um, um, Punaf Kiria area by CDA, and uh, they are managing uh, the whole drinking water supply through these two well. so uh, in first phase we are uh, we have metered uh, this uh, main bulk water supply and in next phase with the help of comms at university uh, ccrd uh, we will install a uh, few meters at the uh, end user so that we have a complete picture that how much we are supplying and how much is actually um, uh, being utilized at the uh, individual household level um, uh, beside this uh, we are working another important uh, initiative which is related to the formulation of groundwater regulatory framework. Um, in Pakistan, different provinces has uh, enacted different water acts and uh, that deals with the uh, creation of uh, groundwater regulatory authority and licensing and all those mechanism, but this is not sufficient. There should have sh sh should be available a complete groundwater regulatory framework, the, 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 the complete process of groundwater governance, uh, so that uh, we should have a check how much we are supplying uh, uh, is being pumped and um, uh, uh, from which area and what type of quality uh, uh, we are providing so that uh, we shouldn't exploit the resource and uh, um, um, we should make the uh, sustainable use of this available resource. For in that context, the groundwater regulatory framework is very much important. Um, uh, and uh, initially we are making effort to, uh, to develop this groundwater regulatory uh, framework for Islamabad. And at later stages, we will uh, provide assistance to the provincial governments uh, regarding the development of regulatory framework because uh, there are different, uh, the issues are different um, uh, in different provinces uh, regarding groundwater availability and quality as well. Uh, so the last one is the recycling of wastewater for multiple purposes. Uh, over here, I am just uh, giving one example of rainwater harvesting. Um, uh, uh, for rainwater harvesting, we are actually collecting, uh, conducting comprehensive surveys, field measurements um, uh, for the development of uh, rainwater harvesting uh, sites. So this is an example that um, we are drilling uh, bore wells. We are actually providing um, uh, treatment, uh, uh, pre uh, uh, treatment uh, uh, before injecting into the recharge wells, and we are also installing uh, flow meters and the um, some of the uh, monitoring network uh, uh, like the piezometer observation wells, and um, uh, installing uh, CC, uh, um, installing CTT divers so that we have a real time picture how much we are. Uh, so we are running short of time. Okay, I, I'm, this is, I mean, uh, the second last uh, slide, just one more slide, I am just summing up. So instrumentation is also very much important so that we have a, a real time uh, picture that how much is uh, that what is happening with the groundwater aquifer, how much we are recharging and uh, what, what is uh, with the groundwater quality and the levels. Um, uh, similarly, uh, with the collaboration of ComSats, um, uh, we are also working on the awareness component as well. Um, uh, this is the last uh, uh, slide. I will conclude my uh, discussion um, uh, with some policy recommendation. The first one is the uh, protection of recharging zones. Um, uh, uh, it, it is equally valid for all countries and for all regions. Uh, we need to protect our recharging zones. Those are the main recharging zones. And uh, due to the urbanization and all those things, there are there is an encroachment and we need to protect it so that uh, the natural recharge should not be restricted. The second uh, important uh, recommendation is this, that we need to adopt rainwater harvesting for groundwater recharge and in general for uh, multiple purposes at local uh, level to the watershed level. And uh, for this, we need to uh, um, uh, focus various uh, interventions. Uh, similarly, there is a need to separate the stormwater drains from the wastewater drains. If the, those are mixed together, there is a, uh, um, uh, 
the uh, the recharge potential actually um, uh, this li limits the recharge potential but if they are the separate one it is easy to recharge groundwater and similarly the availability or the development of groundwater regulation is also very much important and crucial uh, for a sustainable management so uh, this is all from my side thank you very much uh, thank you so much, Dr. Iqbal, for your comprehensive and brief uh, presentation. Now, I would like to request Dr. Toki uh, for take uh, question answer questions uh, from audience. Thank you very much, Chef. Uh, I would like to uh, request the audience, participants, if they have uh, uh, any question, they may ask from the presenters. Hi, this is Rahul Gashem. I am talking from Bangladesh. I am responsible for Dhaka Water Supply and Sewerage Authority. You know the, uh, the capital city, we are managing uh, water supply here. I have no questions, but some remarks uh, about my... Uh, you know that uh, similar situation in Dhaka also, that we are depending on groundwater. And uh, our consumption uh, supply is around 2,700 MLD uh, of uh, uh, water. So now we are uh, uh, the same situation. The groundwater is depleting two to three meters per year. And uh, so now we are changing our focus uh, from groundwater to uh, surface water. And uh, uh, we, we have taken a, a surface water treatment plant. And also one remarkable achievement we have that we reduce, reduce the uh, NRW, no, uh, non-revenue water from 40% to uh, 5 to 7% uh, uh, with, uh, with establishment of DMA, district meter area. It is a managed uh, district uh, with production and consumption and with uh, metering around. So we divided our city into 150 DMA and each DMA we have separate calculations for consumption and uh, supply, both from groundwater and from surface water. We have some points. So in this regards, we save water uh, a, 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 a lot. Uh, and also we are going for uh, smart metering. And uh, we have some problem with, uh, uh, with the tariff that uh, metering and that uh, household meter, we have multi-state building, but we cannot uh, install individual flat uh, metering. Uh, we have a bulk meter to every house for say 20 flats and all these things. So that's why uh, that is a difficulties to control the water consumption uh, uh, and the uh, conservation of water because uh, flat people are using uh, as a Sir, we would love to uh, have uh, information about your uh, revenue and non-revenue water and other things. So may we have a separate meeting, may we, may we discuss later on. Please share your email. Uh, I'm sorry, we are running short of time. So I would request the other participant, uh, if anyone, they have a potential question, then they can ask. Otherwise, we are going to conclude the session. Thank you very much. May I ask the question? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Sir. It was very elaborate presentation and uh, a very much required, very much needed uh, effort for water conservation. And the project is very much appreciated. Uh, but uh, what I just wanted to ask is, while you are uh, uh, con conducting the study, feasibility study, there are uh, some low hanging fruits. I mean, the activities which uh, may be in themselves uh, minimal, but their effect is uh, very much just like uh, the overflow from overhead water tanks in case of I-8, since your area of study was I-8. So such sort of activities should have precedence over other activities. So I would request that uh, our timeline with the uh, low hanging studies, low hanging fruits, achievement of objectives, uh, through low hanging fruits uh, can be uh, modeled and modified and uh, implemented so that uh, the war footing uh, war can be done for conservation of water. Thank you. 
you very much. Thank you for your kind points and question. So we uh, actually we started working uh, in this sector in 2018. So first project, I, as I have mentioned, that we concluded the first project and then the, this study is supported by the D8 uh, uh, Secretariat. So we are uh, going step by step. So uh, maybe we can achieve the objectives uh, which you want to suggest us. So step by step, we can uh, go forward and implement uh, the same things which we have in our mind. Thank you very much, sir. Any other participant, please? Uh, there is one participant from uh, this hall. Uh, you may you may introduce yourself. Yes, yes please. I'm Sayyid Salmanasan and a student of Pajazan University in the Department of Environmental Sciences. And as a question, you use the terms uh, sums and pockets in your representation. Okay. So are these the official terms in water management or you just use it for the reference? So these are the actual terms which they are, uh, uh, water supply management, they are using the pockets because they have the different pockets which they control the different streets under one pocket. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Can you have question? Yes, please. Uh, I'm from the from the University. And uh, I'm very concerned about uh, you said the pocket in the IA sector, which was a bit of uh, contamination. So what was the major contamination? Okay. Actually, we collected the different water samples from the different wells and the filtration plants which they are supplying water to the end users of the sector. So National Water Quality Laboratory of uh, Pakistan Council for Research in Water Resources, they collected samples, analyzed and supported in this project. So complete analysis has been performed. Uh, complete uh, means both uh, chemical as well as the microbiological. So on the basis of that, these results have been successful. Thank you. Any other participant if they have a question? Okay, over to you, Saif. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Dupi and all experts uh, for sharing your precious knowledge. Now, I would like to request uh, Mr. Ahmad Kamal, who is uh, Chairman of Federal Flood Commission of Pakistan. Uh, he will uh, deliver his closing remarks. I would like to request Mr. Ahmad Kamal. Sir, over to you, Mr. Ahmad Kamal. Uh, first of all, uh, on behalf of Council Center for Climate and Sustainability, let me uh, appreciate and thank all the participants who were present in the webinar and who have presented their respective part with regard to the feasibility study for the pooling of safe drinking water. I think that uh, after listening to all the presentations, what I have got first of all was that the water conservation and water scarcity is something which is going to uh, be a challenging aspect for the entire water community uh, in the D8 as well as elsewhere. Secondly, uh, with regard to what the work that Pakistan has done uh, uh, under the auspices of this uh, CCRD, uh, the study in I8, I think that this needs to be upscaled for the sake of uh, getting some sort of a mapping of how well the demand and supply aspects are being taken care of and how well water conservation can be put in place on the right track. Uh, finally, uh, with regard to uh, the overall national to cancer perspective on water uh, policy, on water, in 2018 when we have our first national water uh, policy presented, it is predominantly uh, specific to water conservation and for that very reason, uh, there is a dire need of a national water conservation strategy uh, and uh, uh, our think tank like PCRWR and CCRD can take the lead uh, and in support of them, uh, the D8 countries can build it, build it up to upscale it and to bring in common entry points. So on behalf of, uh, 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 on behalf of conflict center of uh, climate and sustainability, I thank all the participants and I wish uh, such sort of a webinars are held uh, more frequently and a good exchange of knowledge uh, is there uh, so that it can be taken up uh, for the mutual good. I thank you once again. Thank you very much. Over to Dr. Takirza. 
Please. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now I would like to request you all, uh, please turn on your cameras so we can have a group photo. Let us wait for for a minute, for 30, 40 seconds, so everybody can adjust themselves and turn on their cameras. Couple of moves. Uh, those who have not turned on their cameras kindly. Thank you so much. Everybody, thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, 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 no.